Hallo, hier ist Svetlana von Kamui Cosplay und willkommen zurück zu einem Cosplay Crafting Making of. Das ist der third and final Video of my collaboration mit Electronic Arts für Star Wars Battlefront 2. Two. As you know, last time I finished the costume for Aiden Versio. Today, however, it's all about this super shiny Inferno Squad helmet. And here's the catch. It's not a 3D print or resin cast. It's all super cheap EVA foam. It's lightweight, soft and super durable. I actually never made a helmet like this before, so this was quite a challenge. And do you know what's exciting as well? My cosplay crafting books. If you need any help with your project, just check them out and come with cosplay.com. And now, let's make a helmet. The base was a Peppercura file Benny found online. If you're curious, I put the link in the video description. After opening it in Peppercura Designer, Benny printed all parts out in 95% of the original size and then glued them together. As you can see, he only made half of the helmet. But this alone already took him a couple of hours. However, it was enough to see that the size was correct. Following that, I separated the paper helmet again and cut it into smaller EVA foam friendly pieces. This was supposed to become the base of the whole helmet. I traced every part on 5mm high density EVA foam and then added markings so I could stick them together more easily. My glue was very fast drying and super strong contact cement. A thin layer on both sides was enough to bond two pieces together for all eternity. Hey, this already looked more or less like a helmet, almost. To smooth the edges and get rid of any excessive glue, I used a Dremel with a standard sanding drum. Next, I began building up the front of the helmet. Here I actually closely followed the Peppercura patterns and kept adding piece after piece. While the helmet was still wobbly at the beginning, more foam inside made it a lot more sturdy. As you can see, almost all parts were just 5mm EVA foam. I was able to bend it into shape and build up all the curves I needed. Here I didn't even use any heat, but instead the strong bond of the contact cement to hold everything in shape. Since foam isn't flat paper though, even with 5mm I had to change a little bit. So I had to get rid of this middle part here. The elevation at the top was a bit challenging. Just as I did with my basic patterns, I made a foam friendly separation here. After tracing and cutting all shapes out, I added some additional material on top. Once I glued everything together, the final part was slightly thicker at one side. Next, I just dremeled down the edge. As you can see here, I also marked the areas I had to get rid of. Well, and gluing the whole thing on was a little bit tricky too. A bit of heat and my glue was super helpful here. Following this, I added the mohawk. After combining all parts, this was the result. I just had to glue it on super carefully. Setting marks here was also very important. I guess it looked okay so far. Making the round things on the sides was actually one of the hardest parts. Again, I separated my patterns and traced them onto foam. But here were just so many tiny parts. Gluing them together was quite tricky as well. After I finally managed it, I used my heat gun to bring them into shape. The smaller part at the front was even harder. So my marking and numbering game had to be quite strong. I heat shaped everything again and slowly connected the pieces very carefully. Especially here, the seams were quite visible and even wide open in some areas. Additionally, the shapes were so abstract that I seriously had no idea what I was doing. Yay! 
I guess I don't need to explain how I made the ear part here. I tried to copy over as many marks from my Peppakura pattern as possible to find the right position to glue the pieces on. And finally, it was time to add the side fingies. Since the paper pattern didn't work 100% with foam, I had to fill up a few gaps. Afterwards, I carefully connected these parts with the front piece and even had to force the material into the right shape. Again, my glue did an absolutely amazing job here. Next up, I added rings to the inside. I dremeled them a little bit thinner so they fit in. Oh, and I probably should have placed this thing beforehand. The patterns of the mouth part were just a mess, so I had to get a bit creative. Instead of using them, I cut out a bunch of 5mm pieces, dremeled them down and glued them onto each other. Next, I adjusted the edge and glued this thing into the front section. As you can see, I already connected the round cheek things with each other. While the helmet was super wobbly before, this part gave it more stability and made it a lot more symmetrical as well. Now I had to close a few other gaps. Like the bottom of the ear area and the front of the mohawk. My patterns didn't really work at this time anymore, so I had to improvise a lot. This little piece also helped to close the gap in the mouth area. I also used duct tape to create a pattern for this elevated thing on the back. After cutting and dremeling it into shape, I simply glued it on. To cut nice circles, I used this super handy tool from Foamworks. They come in three sizes and are just perfect to cut out round shapes. So I used these for the front and the smaller ones for the ear. The nose area simply got a few 2mm pieces in between. This was pretty easy. A last triangle piece at the top of the mohawk and some additional material around the eyes. Finally, I heat sealed the foam of the helmet and the bucket was done. Now it was Benny's turn. To smooth out all the visible edges and open gaps, Benny used quick seal. Since my helmet was covered with flaws, he spent quite some time on this work step. He also actually covered every single seam at least three times. As you can see though, this stuff is just amazing for clean foam work. Next, I applied three layers of gummy dip. This stuff is quite similar to Plasti Dip, but it's more fluid and creates a smoother finish. Since the helmet is round and pretty large, I had to spray different sections separately. This took some extra time. The result, however, was smooth and already quite shiny. To paint the red elements, Benny applied a good amount of masking tape onto the rubber coat. Additionally, he drew the emblems onto frog tape, cut them out and then carefully stuck them onto the helmet in the right positions. Next, he covered all areas that had to stay black and then had to use his airbrush to apply a few coats of red. All the red! Once the paint job was dry, he peeled the tape off carefully and the result were clean lines and an even paint job. Nice! All that was left were a few silver parts that he painted by hand and some scratches that he did with dry brushing. To protect the paint job and to seal the sticky gummy dip surface, he applied a thick coat of satin spray varnish. Once done, I added some foam padding with contact cement into the helmet. Additionally, I dremeled out a foam shape for the eye visors. I used Warblas Transpart and the black and red sticky foil. By heating the material up, I was able to bring it into shape on my foam. 
Next, I cut the visor out and glued it to the inside. Super professional! And this was all! I was done! Time for a fitting test! I think for being out of foam, my helmet turned out kind of okay. And this is how we created the super cheap and comfortable EVA foam helmet. It took us around 4 days to build and $20 in material cost. As you can see, cool and fancy props don't need to be expensive at all. All you need is a bit of foam, patience and creativity. Whee! I hope this little video series inspired you to create your own Star Wars costume as well. If you still have any questions left, just leave me a comment below and Benny will probably answer them, because I'm mostly busy with crafting. And don't forget to subscribe boom, boom, to see more videos like this. See you next time. Bye bye.